Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have Russian Olive. This comes to us from viewer Crystal in South Dakota. The piece is roughly 5 inches in diameter by 10 inches long. I'm not much of a spindle turner. It, it intimidates me something terrible. A piece like this just scares the heck out of me because I don't know what to do with it. I, I, I'm not a style guy. I, I, don't, uh, I don't have any talent in design. And that's why I like to turn the natural pieces that I do, because the design is already there, you know. All I gotta do is make a hole in it, make a bowl, polish it up a little bit, and it's done. Something like this kind of depends on me <laughs> to come up with something classic or elegant. And elegant and I don't even have anything in common. Now this does have a crack right there. And if you follow it, it comes all the way down and comes out right here and that kind of worries me the piece is very dry so I don't think it's gonna get any worse but who knows I don't intend to keep any of the bark I'd love to if some sticks with this that'll be terrific but I'm not going to make any attempt to keep it on unless uh, once I get it rounded up some of it looks like it wants to stay with us but I kind of doubt that's gonna happen I'm just gonna make a, like I said a, a classic style vase whatever that means I don't really know so I'm just going to put it on the lathe here just between centers I'm gonna turn a large tenon on one end about an inch long because I want to get a good grip on it I don't have a spindle steady so it's all going to depend on the grip that I can get in my chuck uh, so I'll show you all that we'll get it over here to the lathe and get it mounted up I've mounted a step center S-T-E-B step center into my chuck and I like to do it this way rather than take the chuck off and put this into the uh, Morse taper and I like to use a step center sometimes I do uh, because with these little tiny teeth and this retractable point, this will slip, if you get a catch, this will slip rather than four prong center that's not going to slip necessarily. It's gonna grab a hold a little harder. So this is a good beginner center, but uh, a lot of pros use it as well. Not that I'm a pro, because I'm not at this, I can tell you that. And then I found the center on my log. I'm just going to place that on here and bring up my tailstock. I just want to drive my live center into the little hole I poked there. And then I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure and let those little tiny teeth grab it and then we'll see what kind of speed we can get out of this. About 720 RPM. I'm going to use a very large two inch roughing gouge to round this up and like I said that's most likely going to peel off all of the bark but that's okay for this piece. Because we're going for elegant, you betcha. Let me get my mask and face shield on. We'll get to turning us a vase. Now I'm just going to use a eighth inch parting tool to square up the end of the piece. better and we'll make a tenon here
Okay, that'll work for a tenon. Well, actually, it's got to be a dovetail, doesn't it? I'm going to switch to a skew chisel. Create a bit of a dovetail on here. Okay. We're good to go. Now I need to swap out my chuck for my larger chuck jaws and flip this around. I'll be right back. I'm going to be using a bowl gouge. I'm going to start with a 5 8 inch. Even though this isn't a bowl, I just prefer the bowl gouge because it's, it's heavier. It just feels better in my hand. Uh, it should work fine, but I might switch to smaller ones as I, as I work. I don't know. I'm going to be turning at 1300 RPM, mask and face shield on. Boy, that crack is just staying with us, isn't it? I did put CA all along in there. I was hoping to be able to cut it away because it didn't seem like it went all that deep, but it's still there, dang it. I might fill it with sawdust and glue or wood chips and glue. I wish I knew how to do this. <laughs> I know what I want, I just don't know how to get there. Switching to a half inch standard grind. I'm thinking it needs to be narrower right here and then this base needs to be narrower as well. So I'm thinking this is the bottom right here. None of this counts. I, I don't know if my proportions are right. Seems like this is too thick maybe. Look how far I've come in here and that crack is still there. Let's do a parting cut right here. That just helps me visualize the rest of it, I guess. Yeah, I think the proportions are okay.
I know it's not a masterpiece, it's just a vase. Nothing to distinguish it except this these cool knots and grain patterns. Yeah, it'll probably look pretty nice all sanded up and finished, huh? I'm thinking I should go in further here. It works the way it is, but... I'm switching to a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm probably going to regret this right here. I thought I was going to get a catch, but luckily I didn't. Well, speak up. I can't hear you. What, sh what, what does it need? I don't know. See that? That's nice. That part's nice. That knot there, wild grain. Yeah, I guess that's going to be the savior, isn't it? Well, that usually is the case with my stuff. It's not me, it's the wood. Okay, you know, I think that's like the best I can do. I, I just don't know how else to do it. Well, I guess what I'll do is fill this crack. Now I'm scared to even drill a hole. At least a, not, a, not a very big hole because once I connect, you know, if I connect with the outside of that crack, it could just split open right here, I guess. I'll fill it, but I'm not sure it's going to be successful. I do have some nice wood chips here, pretty small, and then I also have some almost dust. So I'll put in the small wood chips first and then the dust after. I guess that's the way to go. I don't do this hardly ever. I probably shouldn't be doing this whole crack at once. And then I just have a handful of the coarse stuff. And I'm just going to rub it in there. And here's some finer dust. Well, it does seem to have filled very well. Uh, I'll let that set up a bit and I'll be back. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch swept back bowl gouge because it has a longer edge and I just want to try and shear scrape this to hopefully get rid of this staining and get a smoother cut along here as well. Still at 1300 RPM, mask and face shield on. Maybe I should use a spindle gouge. I haven't done that in about a hundred years. Spindle gouge, uh, half inch, or no, three eighths inch. Back to uh, sweat back to clean this up now.
Okay. Whew, time for sanding. Well, I said time for sanding, but I forgot we did. we're not done. We need to drill the hole for this. So let me get set up for that. I've installed a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit in my chuck. I've got a depth stop here. The lathe is going to be spinning at uh, about 270 RPM. Oh, the one and a quarter inch will leave about a 3 16 inch wall down here at the thinnest part. And I don't know if I'm going to, to hollow this. The problem is there's some wobble in this. So in hollowing it, I'll probably make that worse, but we'll see how it goes. Well, I decided because of the wobble and because of this crack, I don't want to hollow this out. I don't want to open that crack back up. I don't want it running all the way to the inside. So I'm just going to kind of blend the top here with my hole in the middle. Lay spinning at about a thousand RPM. Okay, now it's time for sanding. So I'm going to use strip sandpaper to sand this. I'm going to start at 120 grit and I'll just sand it like that with it spinning. And to do the inside I've got this dowel with a slit in it and I've inserted a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and I'll just put that in there and use it like that. And I'll show you that as soon as I get my mask on. That'll be pretty easy peasy. The lathe is spinning about 300 RPM. And that's what that looks like. And I'll bring you back here in a little bit when we figure out what kind of finish we're going to put on. See you in a bit. Okay, the sanding is done. Let's get some sanding sealer on here. This is a very open grain wood. Very, very different from the uh, olive wood I turned a while back from Dan in Las Vegas. I don't know what variety of olive wood that is. This is Russian. Russian olive it's called. And they look entirely different. This looks more like cedar. Open grain like cedar. Color like cedar.
but it's pretty, huh? And I've got some sanding sealer in this can and I'm just going to apply it with this little brush to the inside. And this will take a while and you can't see it. I can't even see it. So I'll probably put on at least two coats, maybe three of this sanding sealer. And then we'll decide what kind of finish we're going to put over it. Might go with shellac, might not. So I'll bring you back when it's time for that. See you in a bit. I have three coats of sanding sealer on here. And I decided to go with Axe Sanding Paste and then Axe Finishing Polish for uh, a finish on this piece. You can actually feel the uh, growth rings in this, the difference between the hard uh, annual rings and the soft, soft wood in between. So I don't think any, any kind of finish I put on here is uh, going to improve that any. I didn't see any difference between the second and third coat of uh, sanding sealer. So I'm just going to rub this in. I see a lot of folks using this as the finish, so I thought I'd give it a try. What I have here is smooth, but like I say, you can feel those rings, so it, it has a texture to it. And I'm just hoping this will smooth that out somehow. Don't know if it will. Right now I'm just spreading it around and then I'll spin up the lathe and rub it in real good. I hear a chainsaw running in the background. Maybe you can hear it, I don't know. We had uh, the wildfires here in Bonnie Lake. And I actually got evacuated for uh, seven days. I was gone from home. So I'm kind of getting away from my turning. Getting behind in my turning, I should say. I try and put out one video every week, so <laughs> I'm working as hard as I can to make sure I don't miss a week. Okay, so now I'm going to spin the lathe up at about 400 RPM and spread this around a little better. I'm going to turn the speed up to about 700 RPM and kind of buff it. And now in reverse and I'm going to turn it up to about a thousand RPM. Find another clean spot. And this is just a paper towel. Yeah, that smooths it right out. You can still feel the, the uh, growth rings, but it's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to grab a fresh paper towel and do the exact same thing with the polishing paste. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's see if we can get this piece separated. I'm just going to use a parting tool to cut away from the block of wood in the chuck. The lathe will be spinning a little over 900 RPM. Now I have a flat surface cut for the bottom to set on. Now I want to go in at this angle to undercut it so that uh, the center is higher than the outer edge, this edge right here, so that it'll sit flat. Actually, I don't know if this blocks your view, it does. I really want to grip it with my left hand. 
and hold the chisel in my right hand. So now you can see I need to sand this up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Well here it is, one Russian olive vase in the books. I'll say this for it, this is exactly what I had in mind. This is just what I wanted to turn, the shape. And that grain is just pretty dang cool. Isn't that cool? Then the natural knots. The bottom is finished up, but I know you can barely read my writing. I guess, I don't know, do they make white ink? Maybe I need to get something else. But I'm pretty happy with it. I don't even mind that crack. I don't usually fill cracks because they end up looking like a, you know, filled crack. But this one, because of the way it curves a little bit, it almost looks like it belongs there. I don't know. Looks okay to me. Yeah, I like it. I hope you like it too. Thank you, Crystal from South Dakota, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are most welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.